Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. I'm in a little cramped quarters here. This is the magnetic loop that I'm currently working on. This is the capacitor assembly. Those of you that have followed my channel for a few years will have known that I've built many magnetic loops. This one, however, is interesting in that the drive transmission on it for tuning the capacitor is unique. Now this is actually different from what you might have seen before. You notice how that's smaller? This is the dual planetary gear transmission that I recently did, which has two planetary gear sets in it and gives a ratio of 16 to 1. Notice how much smaller this one is? This one's ratio is 29 to 1. Almost double the gear ratio in a smaller package. What's going on here? Watch this capacitor. See how slow that's turning? There's also no slop in this at all. No play. It's absolutely precise. It's 29 to 1 gear ratio. What is it? This is an harmonic drive, otherwise known as a strain wave drive, and it's almost entirely 3D printed. This might be the first one on a magnetic loop. Don't know. Probably not, but maybe. Anyway, let's go look at the design of this. This is the prototype. It's not done yet, but it will be within a few weeks. So let's go look at the design. This is the design of my harmonic drive. Now, what is a harmonic drive? Well, it's really complicated to explain, but it's really simple. Inside this bell housing here, you'll see there's a ring gear. This has 60 teeth. This gear which sits down inside there has 58 teeth. Now if you have two gears with a different number of teeth meshed and you rotate them, one will turn a little faster than the other. This, however, is unique in that this gear sits inside of this one. Since it has 58 teeth instead of 60, it's smaller in diameter and it just fits in here. What happens is this cam assembly here, which has these bearings that normally sit right here in these this area. These are two these are two seven millimeter bearings. The only part of this that's not 3D printed besides the screws are these little what little tiny bearings. And they are tiny. Here's a picture of one on my index finger. I got a package of ten of them for around eight bucks. Uh, but they sit in here in this cam. And this cam goes down in here and presses this gear out. This is a flexible gear. This is made out of, printed out of TPU 95A, which makes it slightly flexible. Here you can see I'm squeezing it between my fingertips. It's flexible enough that the cam can press it outwards, but it's stiff enough that it carries the torque um, when it rotates down through this connecting assembly here to the output shaft down here. So the cam presses the ends of this out to mesh with the teeth of this ring gear. This is an early prototype where before I was using bearings I was trying to just use a cam and a bushing and a little bit of grease but it proved to be a bit too stiff. But this does illustrate how the cam pushes the flexible gear out, and you can see, I'm sorry about the low resolution here, but you can see where the teeth are meshing out here on either side where the cam pushes out. And then in the middle, the gear is pulled in and the teeth clear. And if you look at this, you'll see like over here, see how these teeth on the flexible gear are on the left side of the teeth? of the ring gear and then as we move across the wave now they're almost lined up right in here they're just like right over the top right there it's right over the top and then as we get over to this this direction you can see how now the teeth are on the right side of the ring gear teeth see that so as that cam rotates this gear is just crawling along the ring gear as that 
transition takes place where these teeth pass over the top of each other, and that's how the motion comes through. So it's, it's like I said, it's hard to explain, but it's really simple. And, and the end result is for every 29 times this cam turns, this flexible gear will rotate one turn in the opposite direction. Why 29? Well, there's 50, uh, 58 teeth on here. Half of 58 is 29. Every rotation around, this moves over two teeth against the ring gear. So two, uh, one rotation is two teeth. There's 58 teeth, so 29 rotations is all the way around. <laughs> uh, it's like I say, it's a little weird, but it, it, it is actually quite simple. And this is the, uh, the design of the whole transmission. Um, this is, by, by now, this is the most complex thing I've ever designed in FreeCAD. There's a lot of components to it. The only things here that you're seeing that are not designed, or rendered, or printed are the screws. They're just in here for the assembly. Um, and these bearings. Everything else is 3D printed and everything prints without supports. You'll notice that the bottom of this gear is tapered. The ring gear is the same way in there. You can kind of see that it tapers into the uh, bell housing. See the tapers there? That's not functional as far as mechanically, but that is functional as far as allowing this to be printed without supports. The uh, screw hole wings here are also angled, as you can see, 40 degrees, and that allows them to be printed without supports too. Uh, I'm using all the tricks that I've learned. The inside pockets of this cam here have screw holes, and you can see these little rectangular shapes in the screw holes. That's a, the bridging trick that I did a video on that allows this internal hole to be printed without supports. This cam assembly, this is the side that goes down on the bed. So no supports are needed for the interior of this. No supports are needed anywhere in the model. It makes it very easy to print. Um, yeah, so this is the design of it. As I said, it's still in the prototype phase. It's pretty much working. I just have a few little things I've got to do. Um, I'm going to change all of these uh, self-tapping holes to use the new um, self-tapping method that I detailed in a recent video. So I've got to redo those. Uh, I have to film the assembly video, putting the whole thing together so that people will know how to put it together properly when they when they download and print the models. It's a fairly high precision model. Your printer will have to be somewhat accurate um, and you will have to get these bearings. Like I said, these are only about eight bucks for a pack of ten. Well, they were at the time of filming of this video. I don't know how international pricing is going to be going forward, but we won't get into that. So anyway, um, not a lot of parts to it. I'll just run through the whole, the whole thing. Okay, we've got an input shaft down here, and it has a hex pad on it for alignment when it screws into the uh, coupling piece. The other side of it has a captured nut and set screw for your capacitor. These are the mounting wings. I've got a template for that and brackets as well. The uh, output shaft hex pocket fits into this cutout in this coupler. And then this has these three pads here that match three holes in the flexi gear. So that's how you transfer torque down to the output shaft. This screw that's coming in through the output shaft comes up through this little hole into this cap, which has got a threaded hole in the bottom of it, well, a self-threading hole in the bottom of it. And then this has a support ring on it for the cam and a support peg for the cam. The cam up here has this big pocket here for the support peg. These are clearance for the screw heads. And then it has uh, holes for the screws to go through to the top of the cam. And holes for these screws, which are also the hinges for the bearings. In the cam, there are flanges here to offset the bearings so they don't rub. And we've got a nice little cutout there for the bearings to fit in. These uh, two screws that come through from the bottom thread into this top part of the cam here. 
And then this has a recessed pocket. Again, I'm using the bridging trick because this is the side that prints down on the bed and we have a recessed hole. So that, that allows this to be printed without supports. And that pocket then matches a pad on the input shaft. This is a self-tapping hole here where a screw comes up through the middle of the cam in here to attach the input shaft. The cover has again these ridges here to stabilize the cam. These encounter the top of the cam and this one encounters the bottom of the cam but only just touching it. Just, just there to stabilize it. Doesn't add any friction to it. So the cam stays very stable and that's your input shaft as well. And then the input shaft just fits through the cover which then also adds stability laterally. And then on the top we have the crank which has a knob for a finger knob for quick cranking and then you can just grasp the uh, legs here to fine tune. So that's it. It's really quite simple for such a complicated subject. <laughs> Um, but it's almost done. It, it works really well. I've been playing with it on the loop and it works very well. I'm, I'm extremely pleased with it. Um, and once I get the final modifications done and get the assembly video filmed and uploaded, I will do an announcement video and the parts will all be available to download and print yourself and put your own harmonic drive on your magnetic loop if you so want to, if you so choose. That is my current major project. It's almost done. I'm really excited to share it with you guys once it's finished. So watch for that video in about two or three weeks. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.